Hi guys, welcome to a video and today I just wanted to kind of give a brief overview of the history of Yuri and how it came to be what it is today. The reason for making this video is I have had an interest in Yuri since I was a teenager. It was one of the things that kind of helped me explore my own identity. It was one of the only forms of lesbian media I had when I was growing up that wasn't strictly pornographic. Yuri is also a product which stems from mainly female creators which is another really cool thing. So the literal meaning of Yuri in Japan is Lily. Yuri is actually quite a common girl's name out in Japan so I wish it was my name. You know I'm white I like to steal things from other cultures so it's yeah you know. Yuri is also a Japanese term for lesbian manga, fiction and anime. It is also known as shoujo ai. If I mispronounce anything it's because I'm white trash leave me alone. So as far as my research took me, which isn't that far, Yuri has its roots in Japanese lesbian fiction from the early 20th century and one of the prominent figures from the early 20th century in this realm was Nobuko Yoshia. Nobuko Yoshia is an interesting and prominent figure because she was one of the first women and first authors in Japan to produce works about lesbian fiction. She wrote books such as Flower Tales, Two Virgins in the the attic and to the ends of the earth. She wrote romance novels, she wrote adolescent girls fiction and contributed to the class S genre. If you don't know what class S is, it is a early 20th century Japanese term for a genre about schoolgirls who developed close emotional bonds with each other. There is debate that this genre wasn't necessarily romantic but I think we can all safely say it, it, it was. It just, it just, it is. It was let's like let, like nebju. So in the 1970s Yuri came to manga and two prominent figures from this period in Yuri manga are Ryoko Yamagishi and Ryoko Aikida. They created prominent Yuri manga such as Lady Oscar and Our White Room. It's important to note that Yuri from this time often contained unhappy themes, themes of tragedy, themes of repression and often treated it as something that was healthy amongst schoolgirls but was not ultimately serious and I think it's safe to say the themes in Yuri were most definitely a reflection of the society and the views on homosexuality at the time in Japan. It was not until the 1990s that this theme began to shift and explore more positive narratives and the change in narrative is most likely linked to the change in attitude towards lesbians and acceptance and of course in the early 21st century there was an absolute explosion and there's almost probably every type of Yuri you could want or ask for and jib 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 jib. So one of the reasons a lot of Yuri is about schoolgirls or about younger women was because the primary consumers of Yuri were adolescent schoolgirls. This actually began to change over time and there was also Yuri created to target other audiences but specifically a lot of it is rooted in adolescence. Please remember that this video is a brief overview. I'm not an expert on Japanese culture, I wish I was but I'm not and it is just to give you some interesting facts and a bit of insight into the genre. Okay guys, arigatou gozaimasu for watching, don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and I'll see you soon. Bye!